G'day Cobbers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, my driveway again today. Now, in this video, we're going to be doing a rebuild of the knuckle of a solid front axle of a Toyota. Now, it might be a 40 series, a 60 series, an 80 series, 105 series, or even a Hilux. They're pretty much all the same. And don't forget the Colt Car 79. Righty -o. so let's get into it. The first thing we have to do is remove the brake caliper, and we're going to string it up to the coil up there. One thing I've forgotten, because this one's got aftermarket brake lines on it, now you usually don't have to do this, is I have to take the brake line off, which is a pain because I have to bleed it afterwards. Just the design of the thing. So it's a superior engineering braided brake line, which works really well, except for the fact to get the caliper off, I've got to disconnect the brake line because it interferes with the bolt. Now with that done, we can take out those two bolts. Okay, now we can pull the caliper out. Now, if you are stringing it up to the call up here, don't forget not to touch the brake pedal because that will push these pistons out and uh, you'll have to bleed the whole system again, which is fantastic fun. Now, if you are interested in working out how to rebuild one of these suckers, uh, I've done a video and that's part of the brake upgrade video. So links up there or in the description. Beauty, let's get the disc off. Okay, now because this is an original part-time four-wheel drive as opposed to most of the 80 series, which are full-time four-wheel drives, this one comes standard with freewheeling hubs, so we're gonna have to remove that. Put it into the free position, and we'll take off those bolts. That one doesn't seem to be fully suiting. Give a bit of a tap-tap, see if we can seat the socket on there. Only problem you might face now is there we go. The socket doesn't want to come off the nut. Alrighty, oh, that's done. I just need to whip him off. Sometimes that's going to be easier than other times. There we go. There we go. It's just a bit stuck with all the grease there. So you can see this is the uh, engagement ring for the freewheeling hub. You'll be able to see a bit of picture of it when we uh, cleaned it up. Now for the body of the freewheeling hub. That's a 12 mil around the edge. And they have flat washers behind them. And behind that <laughs> are my worst enemy, and that's cone washers. Alright, we'll show you how to get them out in a second. So all you need to do is put a brass drift on the end of the stud and give it a couple of solid wax and it should pop out. That's our first one, five to go. Probably better if I wasn't using a rubber mallet. One to go. There we go, that's all six. Now we just need to break the seal there. And of course, one thing I've forgotten is a surf clip. Wonder why it wasn't coming out. There we go. There we are. Righto. Now we've taken the hub off. We can disassemble that, give it a good clean up, and we can actually start taking the rotor off now. The thing we need to do is take a spindle nut off. Now this one's got actually got an aftermarket spindle nut on there. Usually there's a couple of flat tabs in between two lock nuts. There goes my cat. <laughs> Usually there's a flat tab in between two lock nuts, but this one's actually got a couple of little Allen keys there. And just a more reliable arrangement, I think, this one is. Okay, now take the spacer washer off, indexing washer. And finally, we've got a 54mm nut in there. So we'll just spin him off. Now 
Now we've taken the nut off. We've got an indexing washer behind there, but usually they just pull forward. There we go, there's our indexing washer with an indexing tab there. This is our outer wheel bearing. And now our spindle should come off, just like that. And you'll notice the end of the CV actually has a grease nipple. That's not a standard CV in there. There actually are CVs, aftermarket spindles. And we'll take all that apart in a minute. The first thing we have to do is we need to get this seal off. Okay, so there's a series of 14 mil nuts around the edge which holds the seal and the spindle onto the knuckle here. So we'll take all those off. Now with that done, we should be able to remove the seal. Might need to get a screwdriver in behind it. Because I don't run backing plates on the disc, I've actually got a spacer in there, which we can have a look at later when it's all cleaned up. Now, to get the spindle off, sometimes you need to give it a bit of whack. There we go. That's a spindle with the bearings in there. And now, we should be able to remove the CV and axle. Sometimes you have to index them. Some lovely grease in there. That's a short side axle. Now we'll get to pulling the knuckle apart itself. Now moving across the other side of the vehicle now, we have to break the seal there. Now it's on a taper so it can be a bit of a pain. We have to get out this split pin first. So we got the split pin out now. Now split pins are really aren't reusable. Well certainly can't reuse that now. <laughs> That's got all of it. So nut on this particular one is 23 mil so we can spin him off. There we go, and that's a castellated nut, which accommodates a split pin. And now, we need to separate, and this is a separator. So it just fits in between there. And then we just spin him off. And you'll hear a big crack when it lets go. There we go. Simple as that. No need to bash at it with a sledgehammer or anything like that. Just use the right tool. And that one's loose there now. Right, so we can get on with pulling out the knuckle assembly. So before we get the knuckle itself off, it's half a dozen bolts in the back here that hold the wiper on. And that's just a 10 mil, so let's see if we can get all, that, all those off. Now I've got all half dozen screws out. I can push back the two halves, so two of those halves, and the felt wiper, and the rubber. Notice the orientation of the rubber. So the ridge pushes into the felt to secure the felt. And we'll just leave them there. Now we'll go back around to the other side of the knuckle, and we'll take the rest off. The final thing we have to do is release the bottom plate here, the steering arm, and the kingpin adjustment plate up top here. Now there's a couple of shims in between there, so once you take this plate out, you have to be careful of the shims in between there. We'll take all that out now. And we just got four at the bottom. Okay, with that finally done, a little bit of percussive maintenance, and we should be able to pull it all apart. Sometimes these ones will require a little encouragement. They do have cone washers on the bottom here to stop it from dropping out, but they're not usually nearly as hard to get out. Not usually, anyway.
There you go, that's our bottom steering arm there. Now we just need to convince the top one to come out. That was our bottom kingpin bearing. And beautiful, our knuckles off. So it's time now to clean it up and probably a spot of lunch beforehand. You can see all the CV grease in there and inside there there's also a seal which I'll be replacing once it's all cleaned up and top and bottom we have the kingpin bearing races. So one down there, one up there and again once we've got it all cleaned up and you can have a look I'll uh, turn the video back on. Now we've got the kingpin races at the top and bottom which we need to remove. So get a brass drift. Now you'll notice there's half moon cutouts here. So you can place your brass drift in that half moon cutout. Grab your hammer and give it a good old whack. And there's one 180 degrees from that one, so you can give that one a whack too. And try and drive it out as evenly as possible. There's the bottom one, and then you just do the same for the top. Last thing we need to do is get out the inner axle seal. So we'll get the seal puller and we'll whip it out. If you go any further, we have to pull out the seal. And I used to struggle with a screwdriver, but now I use the seal puller. I tell you, they're worth their weight in gold. Don't get me wrong, if I'm going out back, I'm probably not taking a seal puller with me and I'll just sit there with a hammer and a screwdriver till it comes out. But at home, seal puller. I'll show you how easy they are. There we go, seals out. Now we'll just have to clean it up and we'll put the new seal in. Speaking of handy tools I'll use at home but which I wouldn't take out bush, one of them is a insertion tool. So this will drive it in nice and square. So we'll show you how to do that now. So we'll just start him off. I'll put a bit of a blue RTV around the edge. Now that's in. I can just put this up square against it and give it a whack on the back, a gentle whack, so we drive them in nice and square into the recess. And again, I wouldn't be doing this out bush. I'd be using probably a brass drift. But this makes the job so much easier. Okay, now we've got that flush with that surface there. You can see we haven't bent up the edge at all. Wipe away the excess RTV blue. Beautiful, that's job done and ins inserted. And the last thing we have to do before we insert the CV is just put a bit of grease in here just to support it while we're putting the axle and CV or Burfield assembly in. That way it'll keep the seal nice and concentric and support it behind there so the spring won't pop out. Oh yeah, so now we have to put in the two races for the knuckle joints. Next cab off the rank, before we do the knuckle bearings, so one thing we need to replace is the wipers. So make sure you take the wipers off and notice what order they go in. So it's metal and then rubber. And this one has a particular orientation. So the raised piece here goes towards the felt and then we have the felt. Now, when you're putting the new ones on, I've pre-greased this felt. I've pushed in some bearing grease. So I'll put that one on first. Just leave them hanging at the back there. And then our rubber, remembering that the ridge side goes towards the felt. And slowly but surely the last one, which is a metal ring, just kind of work him on in a clockwise fashion. It's not easy, but you'll get there. Without bending it up too much. Beautiful, okay, now we can put the races in for the knuckle. And now for the kingpin races. Make sure that the recesses they sit in are spotlessly clean. We get all the bits and pieces out there so it seats properly in the hole. Let's give them a good wipe out. Now, if I was out in the scrub, I'd pop that in there and I'd whack it home using a brass drift, but but since I'm at home and have a tool to drive it home nice and concentrically, 
I'll do that. You have to make sure the orientation is correct. So if you put them in upside down, that's not going to work for you. You need to make sure the orientation is correct. Once you've got it lined up, just drive him home. Of course, best laid plans has gone in a little bit skew if. <laughs> so, I'll just use a rubber mallet to drive it home. And again, it's imperative that it goes all the way to the bottom. Now, if you don't have a rubber mallet handy, of course, as I was saying before, use either a brass drip or a piece of hardwood and you'll be able to whack it home, no problems. All right, now just for the bottom one. And you can visually check the gap in the edge there to make sure it's all the way home. And you can actually hear the sound when it goes home the sound when you're whacking it slightly changes so you can go by that as well okay on the installation of the knuckle all right for the knuckle bearings i'm using a molly base grease uh, they're not sponsoring me here or anything i wish i've been using pinrod since i was a teenager and let me tell you i'm no longer a teenager now this stuff sticks like you know what to a blanket so get a big handful Grab your bearing and what you'll need to do is push it into the wide gap at the bottom and keep pushing it in until it pokes out the top. And that way you know it's fully worked in. Now if you look closely there you can see it's starting to protrude through the gap there. That means you turn it around a little bit and keep going. And keep doing that until you've worked your way all around the edge and it's poking out right the way around. That way you know that your bearing is fully packed full of grease. There are machines to do this, I don't have one. Now the grease has worked its way out all around the edge. Put a bit more around on the circumference of the bearing. Have a bit of that molly grease run around the inside of here. And then just sit at home. Then it's time to do the other one. But I won't put you through that. I'll get back to you when it's done in a sec. Okay, now I want to have a quick chat about the knuckle. These ones do get a bit of a reputation, and I'm warranted in my opinion, about these four studs here. They seem to work their way out on a lot of 80 and 105s, 79s, etc. Now, the reason I believe that is, is because they weren't put back in properly in the first place. When you take them out, make sure you clean any gunk that you've got there. That one still needs a little bit more work, which I'll be doing in a second. Take the stud out, so double nut it, put one nut and then another nut, lock it out, pull the stud out, clean all the crap out with a bit of brake cleaner or something like that, so you've got a clean, grease-free surface, and then get some thread locker so i use stud lockers so a permanent lock so these ones actually need heat to remove from here on in and same with the stud clean it down with some brake cleaner or, or something similar and then reinsert the stud in with a tiny little bit of force and a little bit over hand tight and let it cure since i've done that i've done lots of corrugations in this car and i haven't had a single problem with it also when you put the nuts on now all like a nugger dugger as much as the next bike but get out the torque wrench it's 96 newton meters set your torque wrench to 96 newton meters screw the nuts down in a proper pattern and that's the end of the issue that's it done fini finish you won't see your, <laughs> your tire trying to overtake you heading down the highway or the bush track it's that simple right let's get on with the installation when it comes to putting your knuckle on, it's a little bit of a juggling edge. So pop him on and grab your arm. Now, I put a bit of RTV blue on there because this car is going to see a water crossing or three. And what you need to do is you need to pop the bearing in the back so it fits into the race there and then run the arm through so the spigot on the end of it runs through the middle of the bearing. 
It can require a little bit of percussive encouragement. And don't forget, we've got the comb washer here, and then we've got the flat washer, and then we've got the nut. So I put the two on diagonally opposite from each other. As long as you've got it lined up okay, you can use a bit of ugga dugga to drive it home. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Now we're going to need the part on the top. Now when it comes to the top bearing cap for the kingpin, I'll put a bit of RTV blue on, and this is the shim. So usually any decent kit will come with a few shims, and what you need to do is adjust the shims until the preload on your bearings are enough that it creates a certain amount of drag when you pull the knuckle from side to side and unfortunately you've really got to suck it and see so I'm going with the standard shim and try and drive these in nice and square and that can be a bit of a bear oh, we might be in luck today Sometimes not a bad idea to pop your steering link in as well. That way you won't get caught out later on. Okay, and we'll just run it home a little bit by little bit. Okay, we've done the top, now we just need to put the other cone washers onto the bottom. And the flat washer nuts, we'll do them up, and then we'll get out the torque wrench and set the preload. So I've set my torque wrench to 96 newton meters, or the equivalent in freedom units, so now we'll just torque them up. one do diagonally opposite and then go there diagonal opposite beautiful all done now the proper way to do it is you pull out your drag link here and use a spring scale to assess how much drag is in the kingpin, how much preloads on your bearing is causing how much drag here. Uh, I do it by feel. <laughs> so later on I'll lift up the other wheel and I'll make a bit of an assessment exactly how much preload I've got on there. I've double checked the by feel method um, last time I did this, though not on video obviously, and it seemed to work out pretty close actually, so uh, I was pretty happy with that. Rightio, so now we can go and start putting the CV in, but first up, we have to grease the CV. Okay, now we've got our CV here, and we're going to put some new grease in there. You can, if you've got a grease gun, which I don't have one here with me of course, use a Zerk fitting on the end of your CV output, if you have one installed in your CV. Now, this CV and axle assembly isn't a standard one. These are ones by RCV. And I uh, haven't managed to kill them yet, despite my driving style, so I'm pretty happy with that. What you can do, you can clean it out, but this grease looks pretty good, so I'm just going to keep stacking in a bit more. So you really need to work that molly grease right in, into the joint. So push it back one way, push it in, push it back the other way and push it in. Now 
It's just like working grease through a car bearing. When you get it through, you can actually see it hydraulic out the other side. And you can see it pushing its way through here. That tells me that I'm pushing in new grease and the old grease is coming out. When you keep packing in into two, you pretty much can't pack in any more. And again, if, you, if your grease is old, I'd encourage you to clean it all out and put in completely new grease. But this one's not too bad, so I'll just top it up. Okay, but when you're sorting out your CV and axle assembly, what you need to look for is your splines here. So I'll just get that in shot. Your splines here are nice and straight and not twisted and they're not too worn. That your surfaces that the bearing now, this is where your inner axle seal runs, that there aren't gouges in that. And we've got another seal running here, and there aren't gouges. We've got another seal running here, and we don't have gouges in that surface either. Once you've fully packed out the CV, I like to just give it a bit of a cover in the molly grease before I insert it. Includes the outside of the CV as well. And there is a flat on this thing as well, and you might have to orientate it. A bit hard to see now, it's covered in grease. <laughs> so what you do, is grab your CV, there's the flat just there. And you run it in there, you might have to fiddle with it a bit. Oh, that one dropped straight in. Looks like a champion. Sometimes you might have to turn it a little bit in order to get it to seat into the differential itself. Okay, now just grab the rest of your grease, whatever you've got left that you haven't packed into the CV, and be generous. One tub per side. And keep shoving grease in there until you're, the tub is completely empty. Like I say, don't be shy about these things. You pretty much can't overfill the thing. So this is actually the port here. I think it's used for the sensor for ABS and the ABS equipped models, which this one isn't. So you can top it up through that hole once it's all assembled, but uh, at the moment we just uh, filled it up. All right, so I'll go and wash my hands and uh, we'll get on with the next stage. So before we insert the spindle, we have to grease it up. Now there's two main types. There's one with a solid bush here and here, and this type, you can see right down the middle there, this one runs needle roller bearings. So we're going to need to make sure there's some grease in the needle roller bearings. And this is just bearing grease, surprisingly. <laughs> oh, the irony. And just fill up those voids as well. A little bit on the outside for a bit of rust protection. This is actually marine grease I'm using. I usually use just high temp bearing grease, but I saw the marine grease there and I thought, well, you know, it does get dunked as much as a boat trailer and probably deeper. So I might grab some marine grease and give that a go. So uh, there we go, it's all ready to go in. Now I just have to prepare the surfaces. This one I've already done, so I've wiped it down with, till it's clean of the grease, and then I've wiped down again with a bit of metho, or you can use brake clean, anything to get rid of the grease on the surface. And now I'll put a bit of RTV blue on there in place of a gasket. I'll get the other bits and pieces together, and then we'll slot it all together. Now, with all these bits and pieces that run on the front here, including the spindle, they have an orientation for the holes. And you see this one's got a drain at the bottom. So we'll line them up. Usually it doesn't hurt. Just for special with the spindle because it's a bit of a push-in fit. To drop in a couple of screws. Sorry, a couple of bolts. And we'll just run them in. Just to make sure it's all the way home. Once that's done, 
करके and put the rest of the bits and pieces on. Now the observer amongst you will have noticed that I don't run a backing plate on the rotor and instead of that I run this spacer plate. The reason I do that is I was sick of pulling the stones out. And these all have an orientation. You'll notice this one's got holes at the top. There's a hole in the middle there. It's covered full of RTV. And once you've done that with your third hand, as you're going through two or three layers here, there we go. We can put all the nuts and bolts in. We, sorry, no nuts, just bolts. And again, these are one of the few bolts I'll actually do up with a torque wrench to torque spec, which I'll look up in a second. The reason being is the full weight of the vehicle on this side of the vehicle is supported by this spindle. So you want to make sure it's bolted up properly. Am I right? No one likes to see we all be the dearly departed as it overtakes you on the freeway. So I'll look up the torque spec and we'll torque it up in a sec. Now it turns out the torque spec is 47 newton meters, so I've set the torque wrench to 47 newton meters, and we'll click it up. That's it, they're all done now to 47 newton meters. So, on with the hub. Okay, next thing we'll look at is a hub and rotor assembly. I've just sat this here. So I've assessed the inner races and the outer races, and they look good, and so did the bearings. So I'm actually going to reuse the bearings and the inner and outer races. So I'm just going to grease them up. If you assess them and you know there was nicks or cuts or scratches or they're just plain old worn out, well you're going to have to replace them. And they're just as easy to replace the races on these ones as they are on the kingpin bearings. So you knock them out from the back using the drift and the hammer. And you might be able to see right down in there, there's little half moon shapes in behind there and you can get into there using a hammer and a drift and you bash them out backwards and then you reinsert them in the correct orientation. So I'll just grease up the bearings and I'll insert them and I'll show you a bit of a trick with the seal. What I've been using for a while now and I'm really happy with it and I'd happily recommend it to anyone to use in 80s, 105s and whatnot. But first up, bearings. A bit of a hard earned tip that I'd like to pass on to you. There's two different seals here. So this is your standard seal and there's, there's nothing really wrong with that. Problem is, you see, this goes into here and that stays static and then this, this surface rubs against your spindle. And, and that's fine under normal duty service. That's, that's fine. But under hard duty service, what this one seems to get, it's an issue and it wears out spindles while spindles are replaceable. Spindles are $180, $200 a side. So by the time you re replace both of them, <laughs> if you throw it in labour, it's a very expensive exercise. And this is what will prevent it. So this is a double lip seal, but not any double lip seal. What happens is the inside can stay stationary in reference to the spindle. So it stays stationary on the spindle and the outside stays stationary in reference to the hub on the rotor here. So all the sealing is done within the seal itself. It's not relying on the hub and it's not relying on the spindle. So <laughs> great invention, they are more expensive, no doubt about it. These are used once pieces and that's fine, no problems, normal duty service. If you're just doing, you know, running around the town, going to get coffees, that's fine. If you're doing outback, you're seeing a lot of dust, a lot of corrugations, uh, you don't mind seeing a bit of sand, these seals are absolutely fantastic. Not only that, these seals work once, so you're supposed to do these every 20,000 K, so probably every year or so, even less under severe duty service. These ones, well, I've run this for in excess of two years now, and it's still going. Each time I pull it out and I think, ah, oh, it'll be buggered this time, but no. No, it's still working fine. So I'm going to reuse it again. Now get a bit of blue. The blue's leaking out the side at the moment, so I'm pulling it off from there. And just run a very light coating. Right around the edge there. And try not to drip the blue onto your leg.
Okay, now that's done. Just drop him in. And you literally just about push these things in flat. Because they're rubber along the edge. And what I do, once I've pushed it in my thumb, is I'll just get a rubber mallet. And just push it in the rest of the way. That's suited. Now, I've already put the bearings in. Um, now the seal's in. I'll pack him behind the seal. With a bit more grease. You can over grease, but you've got to be trying to do it. And that's ready to install. Just need to put the front bearing in, which I've already pre greased. So let's put it on the vehicle. Okay, so I've pre greased the spindle, so I put a light coating of bearing grease on the spindle. And I've also put a light coating of grease in behind the seal here and on the sealing surface down the back here. Okay, so it's time to put the rotor off. Could take a little bit of pushing. There we go. Beautiful. And I've pre greased the front bearing, which I'll just slide in there. Beautiful. Now, the kit which I got from Train Tamer, not sponsored by those guys. Um, I just like their gear and I'm happy to pay for it. Um, gave me an extra thrust washer, which is fantastic. And what they also gave me, which I haven't seen the kit before, was a new set of nuts and a new tab washer. So what usually happens is you screw on one of the nuts, you adjust the preload on the bearings, and then you put on the tab washer and it indexes up in here in the, in the keyway. And then you put the other nut in. Now, when you put the locking nut in, you then bend one of the tabs over to hold the inner nut in, bend one of the tabs out to lock in the, the locking nut, and you're good to go. But I've actually gone with an aftermarket one, so I think it's a little bit easier, for me anyway. There's no tab washers. I have a, a hate for tab washers. So what I've done is gotten an aftermarket one. It's actually made out of... 4030 I believe steel so it's it's a higher quality steel as well and what that one does is once we start it up once we set our preload which I'll be doing in a second it's got an indexing washer which I'll show you in a second once I get a little bit of preload on it now once you've got your indexing washer you just slot it in here and it lines up on the indexing plate with the holes there and a couple of small allen screws go in and you're good to go and there's no messing around with tab washers or anything it's fantastic anyway let's set the preload hey now let's set the bearing preload now if you happen to be a mechanic i'd advise you to look away at this point because this is not going to be pretty okay and what we do is we tension it up and we give it a bit of a turn We tension up again and give it a bit of a turn. Now, this is the bit where I advise you to look away. So you grab your rubber mallet <laughs> and you beat on it like it owes your money, okay? I'm not even joking. You really need to make sure this isn't going to see light duty service. This is going to see hard off duty service. And I need to make sure everything, all the tolerances are closed up. The only way I've seen to successfully do that is to beat on it. and give it a bit of a twist. And usually you'll get a bit of movement out of them. There we go. Just a touch more, beat on it again. Give it a bit of a turn, and just. We really need to make sure all the gaps in there are closed up and again I've got a bit more movement out of it. Right. Okay for the, now for the final torque 
we grab our tension wrench and reset that down to about 25 newton meters. There we go. And we tension it up to 25 newton meters. It seems to work all right for me. It seems to work all right. Rightio, now that looks good to go to me. All we need to do now for this particular setup is we need to put the indexing ring on. Hopefully that lines up with a couple of screws and it does, which is always a good thing. And we need to put the Allen's keys in there. And one diagonally opposite the other. Okay, with that all done now, it's time for the freewheeling hub. And next up is the body of the freewheeling hub. So I've greased all in around here and put a bit of RTV blue along the edge. And again, I've, I've greased light coated grease all along here. Now, a tip for those with 79 series is this part here seems to smash in even the original hubs. Um, I've replaced mine with a long field. I believe now they're made by Trail Gear, I understand. So uh, you can replace that with an aftermarket bit and that'll take away the issue. Rightio, so it does index to the two dowels there. So you need to make sure they're all lined up. There we go. Now just run the nuts on. Now that's done, actually put a ratchet on there and I'll snug them up by hand. There is actually a torque spec for them, and if you want to do that, you're more than welcome. Don't forget the snap ring. Okay, and as I was saying before, grab yourself some snap ring pliers. I've said it in a video once or twice, but geez, they save you some heartache messing around with screwdrivers. I actually put this into my uh, going away on holidays trip tool kit. I just don't want to get stuck without them. Make sure that's fully into the clip there and we're done we're ready to put the face on now okay now it's time for the freewheeling hub so if you have a full-time four-wheel drive like let's say an 80 series full-time four-wheel drive all you'd have to do is pop the drive plate on tighten up these nuts you put this put the snap ring in and then dust cap over the top you're done and if you want to have a look at that we've actually done a very similar setup in an 80 series when we're up the road in the brakes and we'll just put a link above but if you have the freewheeling hub like I do, with a part-time four-wheel drive, you can see there's little clips here and 180 degrees just here. And I'll zoom in a bit so you can have a look at that. And you can see there's larger gaps, 180 degrees apart. So they need to orientate themselves like that. Otherwise, it just won't go in. And then we can seat him in. Right there. So now we'll grab the screws and we'll do it up. I believe the torque spec for these are about half a hugger dugger, so it's not a lot. We're all done. Now, this side's all complete, ready to go, by the caliper, obviously, but we still need to put the wiper on the back. So we'll shoot around the back, and we'll put the wipers on. So this one usually provides some <laughs> entertainment. So what you need to do is you need to put your steel ring in there, and then we got our rubber ring, and then we got our felt wiper, and then we got these two half rings. You need to make sure when you're putting them together that they overlap so they keep each other in. Oop, there we go. <laughs> make sure they overlap properly. Yes, like that, there we go. So you need to line it all up, and it's not easy because you're going through felt, and then you need to tighten it down. Now you don't need to squash the bodging goes out of it. Just a, just half a nugger dugger will do the job. Righto, so let's get on with it. You can watch me frustrate myself in fast motion. Here's our steel ring. And usually I'll do the bottom first because I'll do the easy bit first. <laughs> 
Alrighty, aye. I'm popping through there, orientate your felt correctly. Pop it through there, through the felt. Line up your rubber and try and find the hole. There's one there. It's easier said than done. If anyone knows an easier way of doing this, by all means, pop it down in the comment section. I'd be, I'd love to know. Okay, now that's done. We'll shoot around the front side again and we'll make sure it stops and make sure it keeps turning. Okay, so now we have to put our castellated nut back on. We'll start him off by hand. Now there is a torque spec for this, but I'm painting never too much mine because, well, once you've got it up to torque, you'd have to probably move it anyway to get the split pin through. Yeah, you're probably not gonna get it on the first go. Oh, I'll tell you, someone's smiling down on me today. So we'll push it all the way through. And pull the bottom half back if I can grab hold of it. We'll get our soft hammer. Beat him up that way. Now we'll grab our snippers. Aim roughly so he's going to poke up to the right distance to the bottom of that steering arm there. Now we'll just push him up out of the way. Right now, now we're going to make sure we go and keep on steering. We have to work out some way to stop. So let's, let's work that out now. So to stop, we're going to have to put the caliper assembly back on. And of course, I've cleaned down the rotor with a bit of brake clean. Might require some encouragement on there. All we have to do is line up the bolts at the back and we're cooking the gas. Well, diesel. Top one's in. Now I just need to find the short extension and put the bottom one in. Uh, guys, thank goodness it's all finished. That took a while, but well worth the effort. Now, guys, if you like this video, give it the old thumbs up, and if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Now, because I know this is going to see a water crossing or seven, what I like to do is, with the bottom arm, is I'll put a coating of RTV blue on there, and I've just put a very light coating of molly grease there to sit the bearing in. So, it's a bit of a juggling act. The race has to go there, so you can pop that in there. And then you need to line up. And go through the bearing in the bottom here. <laughs> Cut it on upside down. Oh, you moron, Simon. She's got a smoke in her garage. Who? Taylor. Right. Get her husband to deal with it. It's a freaking snake. You'll have to just sort of hustle it out, will you? With a stick. <laughs>